For this unit, this is really all you're going to need. A piece of paper and a pen. It doesn't need to be a fancy pen. It can be a fancy art pen if you want to, but I don't even have one of those right now, so I'm just using a plain old ballpoint pen. We're going to talk a little bit more about one of my favorite topics, mark making. Mark making literally just refers to the types of marks you are using in an artwork, and those marks mean how are you making value. So I know in the past we've talked about hatching as a way to create value. The less dense your lines are, the lighter the value, and the more dense your lines are, the darker the value. So if I was doing this on a sphere, and I had a light source, and I had my highlight, my midtone, and my shadow, and my cast shadow. I would start hatching, making lines going in the same direction to mark in those values and create depth. Just a really simple example. The other one that I know we've talked about, or we talked about in Art 1, is cross-hatching. So with cross-hatching, it's a lot like hatching. You're making marks going in the same direction, but then you make marks going in the opposite direction, perpendicular to those original marks, just to make a cross. Same idea here. The more spread out your cross-hatching is, the lighter the value. The more dense and layered they are the darker the value and your sphere would look very similar with different marks. And there we go. Then the last one is stippling. Stippling is just a series of dots. The denser the dots, the darker the value. The more sparse the dots, the lighter the value. I'm gonna make a teeny tiny sphere here so it doesn't take too much time. Lighter and, and darker. And denser. Now these are all great, and these are fine and dandy, but that's not really what we're gonna focus on for this unit. We're gonna focus on a controlled scribble. Now you might think, well, like a scribble, like how are we gonna just draw like that? And that's not exactly what I mean. We want it to be controlled. So for a controlled scribble, I'm still kind of making almost, I'll do it bigger so you can see, sort of circular, wavy, layering upon itself marks. And I'm working lightly. And then if I wanted to get darker, I could press down a little bit more with my pen. But I think what's distinct about Scribble is that when it's all together and that it's done well, it looks really like a pretty smooth value, right? So let's think about if we had a six part value scale, oops, if we had a six part value scale, so we had our lightest value over here and our darkest value over here. Let's do one, two, three, four, five, let's do six. So assuming that this is my lightest value, that'll be my highlight, that's nothing. Go ahead and start by making very light controlled scribbled marks in your first one for your lightest value. Then moving into the next box, same thing, I'm going to press a little harder, just a little bit. Next one, same thing, but I'm gonna layer even more and I might press down a little bit too. Keeping in mind, looking back at that second value, asking myself, did I just get a little bit darker? Then moving on to the fourth one, same thing. And 
and the last one will be our darkest so it's going to be pretty dense. And now we have a controlled scribble value scale. So let's go ahead and apply that on a sphere. Let's use a slightly larger sphere so we can get a little more practice. Let's zoom out here. Okay, let's go ahead and draw a sphere with me. Notice how I like to draw my spheres using lots of different marks. I don't just go whoop, it's a little harder. And I'll just draw a generic cast shadow down here. Let's assume the light woo, is up there. So that means that our most intense part would be here, right? About uh, our light would be here and our midtone and our shadow and then our cast shadow. So I'm going to start. I'm going to leave my highlight white. So this is going to be the highlight. And then for my light, I'm going to work kind of in between these two values and I'm going to start lightly scribbling around my sphere. Again, really start with light pressure and then you can get a little bit darker kind of once you know where you're going and how dark you know things need to be. So as I'm approaching my mid-tone here, I'm going to get a bit darker. If you're feeling any sort of strain in your hand or on your wrist, you shouldn't be feeling any. Um, so perhaps perhaps loosen your hand, right? Don't like grip, grip, grip super hard of the pen. It should be light. This really shouldn't um, hurt you in any way or this shouldn't be exhausting on your hand. So I'm gonna get darker, 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 darker. Getting really dark here as we approach the shadow. And then if we were in class right now, I'd say, what's next to the core shadow? And you all would yell, reflected light. So for the reflected light, I'm gonna switch into a lighter value. So probably going back here to the reflected light. And then for my cast shadow, we know that the cast shadow is going to be pretty dark. We'll scribble that guy in too. And there you have it. And if you're saying, Miss O, it's a scribble. Like, how are we going to get really detailed and fine tune something with a scribble? But it really is just up to you with how little you make your scribble. So, of course, your scribble can be really, really big for a larger area, but your scribble can also be super, super small, too, right? And that's really up to you and your control. So, now we're going to go ahead and practice sort of how to make that come to life on an image.